This is Candy with eyes to Jesus.blogspot.com and welcome to Anti-Vlogmas. It has been, I don't know, a few to several years since I've done Anti-Vlogmas and I've had multiple requests to uh, do so again this year. So in case you don't know what Anti-Vlogmas is, Anti-Vlogmas is basically not Vlogmas. It is vlogging every day for 25 days of the month of December, but I don't celebrate Christmas and part of this anti-vlogmas series is each day I will share just a tidbit, a short tidbit with you as to why I don't celebrate Christmas and that's why I call this anti-vlogmas. So right now I am literally packing a bag and uh, getting ready. Uh, one of my children and I have an appointment that we need to get to and I'm packing a bag because it's going to be a road trip. Uh, it's a couple hours away. It's a, li it's a little over two hours away and depending on traffic could be two and a half or more. And so round trip, I'm going to be driving approximately five hours today. And then once we get to our destination, it's going to be at least a few hours at that appointment. So uh, it is almost noon and we are getting ready to head out and we're going to be out all day. So I will check back in with you when we get back home tonight. And I am back. So uh, it is just about 8 o'clock at night. We got back a little while ago. We all just did supper. Uh, we did some takeout and had a bit of a celebration. Today's uh, duty <laughs> that had to be done was fabulous and it worked out really, really well. So as I told you uh, just a bit earlier uh, about my anti-vlogmas, is each time I'm going to just explain to you just a little tidbit as to uh, why uh, I don't celebrate Christmas and why my family and I don't. So tonight or today for our December 1st anti-vlogmas I thought a good place to start would be a mini Bible study in Jeremiah chapter 10. We're just going to look at like the first 15 verses. So uh, I would love it if you'd follow along with me. Uh, Young's literal translation is the most accurate one. As it says it's a literal translation so it's the closest you're going to get to reading the Hebrew without being fluent in Hebrew. And uh, you can read Young's Little Translation for free online. For example, BibleGateway.com Bible has it. A lot of places do. Okay, so uh, yeah, Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 1. Hear ye the word, O house of Israel, that Jehovah hath spoken for you. Many would stop right there and say, oh, well, that was just for the house of Israel back then, and that's not for the people of God today. Well, two things to that. Okay, now one, uh, there were people who were called the House of Israel who lived amongst the Israelites who were not Jewish by blood. They were not genetically Israelites. They were other peoples. Because you read throughout the Old Testament how there were, there were some people who joined the Jews and saw that Jehovah is the one true God and you could say converted to uh, being Jewish as well and following the one true God and living among the people of God. And they were counted in here. Uh, as a people of God. Okay, but uh, also two, well, Romans chapter 11 under the new covenant, if you are a saved born again Christian, then spiritually you are Israel, regardless if you are genetically or not. Israel ultimately denoting the people of God. Okay, verse two, thus said Jehovah, unto the ways of the nations accustom not yourselves. Let's stop there. Did that change? Now can the people of God accustom themselves to the ways of the nations, that means the ways of the world? No. I mean, uh, Romans 12.2 tells us no. And this goes perfectly with Romans 12.2. And Romans 12.2 tells us that we are not to conform to the ways of this world. 
And that's what this is saying here. And then the second part of verse 2, And by the signs of the heaven be not affrighted, for the nations are affrighted by them. And specifically here, uh, I mean, yeah, this is ancient astrology, but uh, specifically here I believe this is also honing in and zooming in on the planet Saturn. Uh, Saturn, uh, the Satan planet, the one with the six-sided hexagon on its pole, uh, was a symbolic uh, planet in the scriptures. The scriptures call it the star of Remphan, for example, and that's referring to Saturn, the six-pointed star. Okay, um, and uh, as we go on to read the context here, that does seem to fit. So before we continue, what am I reading to you? I'm reading to you the progenitor of Christmas. We're reading about the first Christmas in the Bible. So many people think the first Christmas in the Bible is in the beginning of the uh, Gospels in the New Testament. But uh, no, Christmas isn't in any of the Gospels in the New Testament. Christmas is right here in Jeremiah chapter 10. Okay, verse 3. For the statutes of the peoples are vanity. Statutes here indicating religious statutes or religious traditions. So the people of God are not to follow the religious traditions or the religious customs of the peoples. All right, and now it's going to go into a specific religious custom of the peoples, Christmas, which has its progenitor being Saturnalia, the Christmas star of Saturnalia being the planet Saturn, which is the Satan planet. And that is why Christmas trees have stars on top of them. That is a Saturnalia star. This is talking about, <clears throat> excuse me, this is talking about uh, what was a progenitor even Saturnalia. Okay, so... Verse 3, for the statutes of the peoples are vanity, for a tree from a forest hath one cut. They went out into the forest. What kind of trees do you find in forests that you cut down? Tends to be evergreen trees. They had cedar trees. They had fir trees. They had evergreen trees. All right, so they went to the forest and they cut down a tree. What did they do with this tree in this religious statute or custom of the people? Work of the hands of the artificer with an axe. They cut it down with an axe. Verse 4. With silver and with gold, they beautify it. And another way to translate beautify here is decorate. So they are decorating or beautifying this tree with silver and with gold. With nails and with hammers, they fix it and it doth not stumble. So they have it set up in what we would call today a Christmas tree stand. They have it set up so that this tree that they cut down from the forest and dragged to wherever they dragged it and then they decorated it or beautified it, they also set it up so that the tree would not fall over. So they decorated a Christmas tree and it's in a Christmas tree stand. Verse 5, as a palm they are stiff and they speak not. They are surely born for they step not. Alright, so in other words, these Christmas trees, they're standing up straight and stiff. Just like a palm tree, just like a tree would do. Okay, they're standing up straight and stiff. Um, and they have to be carried to wherever you want to put them because the, it's an idol and it has no life in it. It can't walk. All right, be not afraid of them, for they do no evil. Yea, also to do good is not in them. Be not afraid of them, because as we learn about in 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and 1 Corinthians chapter 10, the idol itself has no power. It can't do anything to you. Where the problem lies is that behind idols are demons. The idol itself... Don't be afraid of the idol. It can't do a thing. It can't do anything. It's pretensies. But there's a demon behind that idol. And that's why 1 Corinthians chapter 10 says to the children of God that we can't be partakers of the table of the Lord and of the table of demons. Verse 6, Because there is none like thee, O Jehovah, great art thou, and great is thy name in might. Who doth not fear thee, king of nations? For to thee it is becoming. For among all the wise of the nations and in all their kingdoms there is none like thee. So don't fear idols. Put your fear in God, the one true God, the righteous judge. Verse 8. And in one they are brutish and foolish. An instruction, an instruction of vanities is the tree itself. Brethren. 
how can this get any clearer? This is talking about the Christmas tree. If you have a Christmas tree up in your house right now, you have an idol in your house. If you are calling yourself a child of God, a Christian, and you have this idol up in your house, then you are following the statutes of the people. All right, You are following unto the nations. You are accustomed unto the nations. You are conforming to the world that Romans 12, 2 says you're not to conform to. So it's saying that, yeah, the Christmas tree in and of itself isn't the issue. The issue is a demon behind it, okay? Parallel this with 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 8. The power behind Saturnalia is Satan. A Christmas tree is a Satan tree, if we just want to put it right out there. That's why Satan's symbol is set right on top of it in its traditional decorations. And so it's brutish. And foolish, verse 8 says, to have this Christmas tree up. All right? And what is a Christmas tree? It's an instruction of vanities because it is vain. You're choosing to follow the traditions of your fathers instead of following the one true God and what he would have for your life. Did the Israelites get a pass when they decided to follow God, but also to build their golden molten calf when they're at the foot of Mount Sinai, and they thought they could do both? No, they did not get a pass. They received judgment. Verse 9, spread out silver from Tarshish's brought, and gold from Uphaz, work of an artisan and of the hands of a refiner. Blue and purple is their clothing, the work of the skillful, all of them basically makers of Christmas tree decorations. It's how we would uh, see this as today. <clears throat> Verse 10. And Jehovah is a God of truth. Christmas is a lie. Baal was born on December 25th. Jesus was born on September 29th. The, the Christmas tree is a vanity. It says the foolish and the brutish have the Christmas tree. And the Christmas tree is forbidden in the scriptures. It's forbidden directly right here. But God, Jehovah God, is a God of truth. And what is Jesus? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. All right, no one comes into God but through Jesus, who is the truth. Jesus is God. God is truth. If you are a Christian, that means that you are a Christ follower and you attain to be more Christ-like as you advance on your Christian walk, on your Christian sojourn in this vapor of a life before we move on to what's next. So we're supposed to follow truth. Jehovah God is a God of truth. Christmas is a lie. A Christmas tree is an idol. Christians are not supposed to partake in these. Verse 10, and Jehovah is a God of truth. He is a living God and king age during. From his wrath shake doth the earth, and nations endure not his indignation, the righteous judge. Verse, verse 11. Thus do ye say to them, the gods, lowercase g, who the heavens and earth have not made, they do perish from the earth and from under these heavens. The maker of the earth by his power, the establish of the world by his wisdom, who by his understanding stretcheth forth the heavens, at the voice he, God, given forth. A multitude of waters is in the heavens, and he causeth vapors to come up from the end of the earth. Lightnings for rain he hath made, and bringeth out wind from his treasures. Lord God is the creator. Why would we create idols out of his creations and give them religious significance? Christmas is a religious holiday, regardless of how you have it, quote unquote, in your heart or not. People will say, well, yeah, we do the Christmas tree, but it's in our heart that matters. No, your actions show your heart. Your heart is deceiving you, and it's desperately wicked. Jeremiah teaches us that. Okay, your heart is being on full parade display. You're showing what really matters to you, and it's that you're foolish, that you're brutish, that you're following the vanity of the traditions of the people of this fallen world instead of following after the God of truth, Jehovah God. Verse 14, brutish is every man by knowledge, put to shame is every refiner by a graven image, for false is his molten image, and there is no breath in him. So we began talking about beautifying a tree that was cut out of the forest and setting it up in a stand so that it doesn't fall over. And now, here in the same breath, we're being told, yeah, and just like that, we're not allowed to do, not to also have graven images, and we're not allowed to have molten images. This is, put, this is classifying the Christmas tree 
in the exact same category as all the other idols. This is classifying the Christmas tree in the same category as the golden molten calf idol that the Israelites built at the foot of Mount Sinai. It's classifying the Christmas tree and the golden calf that's pretty much the same thing. It is an idol with a demon behind it. Verse 15. Vanity are they, work of erring ones. In the time of their inspection, they perish. And that actually is a good place to stop because from there it just goes on with Jeremiah's prophecy uh, accounting for the people of that time. But the word of God is timeless. It doesn't pass away. It is here for us now. And this word, God, the Bible says God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So God say to back then, mm, you can't do the Saturnalia tree, Christmas tree, but now we can. Did Christians baptize the Christmas tree into Christianity? That is not scriptural. If you celebrate Christmas, and if you have a Christmas tree up right now, and you consider yourself a child God, please understand that your heart is showing, and your heart is showing vanity, foolishness, and brutishness, that you'd rather follow the customs of the people instead of following the truth of the Lord God. Have a blessed day.